Welcome to the football show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. We're on the night shift tonight because obviously we had to wait, Ruffy, uh, for Ali. Unbelievable, by the way. It's unusual for us to start this late, but if the start uh, of the show demands it in our contract, then we have yeah. to wait for the show. Yeah, it's getting back to the old school days where you had to bring a note in, get yeah. more, you know, <laughs> <laughs> explaining why you were late. Absolutely. So, uh, well, yeah, what are we here? Don't you? don't need to apologise. When you've got friends, Ali, you never need to say you're sorry. You should know that. Uh, Alison Ruffy. And of course, Tam McMahon is here with us. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you download the PLZ Soccer app, you'll get all the latest breaking football news as well as our unique video content to watch. So, uh, lots to talk about. So, we'll get right into it by uh, just basically saying uh, well done to um, everyone who's taken part in our competition last week. Um, we have a winner of the Ajax top, and it's Brian Kelly, who's, a, a, I think, a queen of the South fan. So well done to you, Brian. The answer, Ruffy, Ajax have won the European Cup. How many times? Four. Four times. Why, why have they got three stars in the I do not know why they haven't got the other one on it. Is that to throw people off? It was question? actually because, quite simply, that one? they that won Ajax it one? three times under Johan Cruyff when he was a player, um, where Ajax obviously dominated. Um, and then... Uh, 1995 Patrick Cliver mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, scored the winner against AC Milan so there okay. you are and that's a punishment Ali he's taking it didn't he <laughs> Dumfries yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It's, not a, it's not a great road drive we're posting it out to you it's as simple as that so well done uh, competition's been really really popular every week we are trying to give you lots of different competitions with uh, great prizes and I think we really have excelled with this one it's another fantastic competition from PLZ Soccer. You can win this Lionel Messi Argentina World Cup winning replica jersey by answering this simple question. Who did Argentina defeat in the 2022 World Cup final? Post your answers in the comments section below. If you want to double your chances of winning, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Good luck. <laughs> what about that? Well done, Tom. You might... <laughs> <laughs> we, managed, we managed to get that, that top in in double quick time. Well done, Tam. I didn't think we were going to make it, but that's what you can win. That's not bad, Ruffy, is it? Oh, it I'll tell you what, I sent away for this the minute they'd won it, because you know how the adverts come up to try and entice you in, but it's got... Peter, the, turn it around. Peter, it's turn it around so it's you can got see the the three gold stars on it, Ruffy, which, can you tell me the years they won it? 78. Uh-huh. 86. Yep, there you are, you've nailed it. In 2022, and as you can see on the back there, that's not bad, is it? You happy with that, Ali? Oh, that's great. That'd be good. So good luck with the competition. That is absolutely fantastic. Um, as ever, we're trying to give you as many chances to uh, win. And the great news is if you hit the subscribe button, uh, then you double your chances of winning the prize so uh, join the football family uh, and give us um, quite simply the answer and don't forget uh, to subscribe as well the uh, quiz is a belter with uh, James Tavernier in mind uh, how many goals has James Tavernier scored for Rangers um, how many goals has James Tavernier scored for Rangers in his career with the club the reason I mention that I Ruffy play. is because uh, just goals don't be, <laughs> don't be a noise up um, the reason I mention that Ruffy is congratulations to uh, James because James Tavernier uh, along with uh, Alan McGregor and Steve Davis were voted into the Rangers Hall of Fame so great picture of the three of them there and I, I, I couldn't think of three more worthy inductees into the Rangers Hall of Fame uh, and the one thing I really do like about the Hall of Fame since it started is it's a cracking bust of the, the, the Rangers jersey that everybody gets who's inducted into it. So, great picture of the three guys. That's wonderful. You know, yeah. I think anybody will tell you that uh, when you're at a football club, if you're fortunate enough to be there long enough and get that kind of trophy, it's, it's a good one to have in the house, you know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got one? No. <laughs> So it's just, when I was working for him, I had to walk by up the stand and everything. They walked by his picture every time. Yeah. Like, he's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, absolutely. The Hall of Shame, I think. I, <laughs> don't worry. Put that behind you, by the way. Uh, the thing about it is, I think you're in, uh, are you in four, hall, four hall of Fames. Five? Five, yeah. How are you in five? Two, two, two Scotland ones. Oh, you get one for the 50, don't you? Yeah. And then there's the overall Hall of Fame that I was, the, I was on the board. Who's that? Thistle and Hibs. Thistle, Hibs, Glen Afton. 
Yeah. And Afton. Mm. Yeah. Well, he did. He win. bought that. He, he did. No, he the budget lit. Well, still, still got to win it, Robbie. Well, to be fair, he bought that trophy. Can I just say something to you? He may well have bought it, but with a. O- almost a billion spent at Man City. They still haven't won the Champions yes. League. Ruffy yeah. delivered it. Yeah. Ruffy uh, delivered it. Was three years, but we got there. Yep, absolutely. Two, two, two losing bungs. finals. But two losing, three finals in a row. Yeah. Unheard of, unless you're welcome, like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, <laughs> well done uh, to everyone. And uh, Hugh Scott says you're in the Glen Afton one as well. Hugh, there you are. Um, in the company of legends. Absolutely, or legends. well, legend. Legend. <laughs> <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, Sorry, I was thinking I'm messing it at my shoulder. <laughs> yeah. So well done. Uh, good luck with the competition, and uh, uh, it, we'll give you the answer to the quiz at the end of the programme. It's a, it's a belter, by the way, because he's had a fair few um, appearances as well. Plus the other thing about it, which you've got to take into consideration, Ali, James Tavernier was there in what many Rangers fans consider the dark years. Yeah, he's been there a long time. I think uh, I think it would be very churlish to argue with his return. I know Tam touched on it there, how many goals from open play. I know it would be, uh, I think his retract- detractors may point to the fact that so many come from, from penalties and set pieces, but I think he has a, a, a tremendous ability. The, the free kick at the weekend, I think, would be um, indicative of the ability he, he's got from dead ball situations. And I think for any fullback to have a return like the one he's got, I think would uh, it reflects very well on what, what he's had to offer. Yeah, and, and no argument with McGregor or Davis, two top draw players. We'll talk about that a little later on as well uh, when we get to uh, the Rangers' result against Livingston. Some things that might obviously uh, occupy your mind if you want to give us your thoughts on it as well. Um, a few injury doubts for the uh, via play League Cup final on Sunday for Rangers. Lundstrom, Jack, Arfield, Tillman. Uh, as ever with the manager, he'll be uh, cautious on who is going to play, who's not. He'll be keeping his cards very close to his chest. Um, Ian, Aidan McGeady will get Tam's thoughts on Aidan McGeady. It looks like it's a hamstring and a bad one at that. Um, he heard something pop, so could he be out for a while again just when Hibs really need him because he's been certainly their best player in the last, what, six or seven games. Dave Cormack, we wish him well. Triple uh, bypass um, that heart operation. I think it's taking place uh, this week. And Alan Burrows will handle the manager search. Um, obviously, there are uh, candidates there that Alan Burrows, when he gets in as chief executive of Aberdeen, will have to uh, deal with. And, of course, a wee bit of speculation that Newcastle United will be monitoring what's happening to Arsenal's Kieran Tierney. He's just a bit part player at the moment. So, there you have it. A few things we'll be talking about. You can give us your thoughts on it as well. Uh, let's cut to the chase. Here's the results from the weekend in the Scottish Premiership. Celtic 4, Aberdeen 0. Dundee United 1, St Johnston 2. Hibs 2, Kilmarnock 0. Livingston 0, Rangers 3. St Mirren 1, Ross County 0. And Motherwell 2, Hearts 0 from yesterday, which certainly was a surprise. So... Uh, Celtic still with that nine point advantage and getting ready for the cup final this week we'll have managers and players all giving us their thoughts ahead of that big showpiece for the first piece of domestic silverware Celtic rampant against Aberdeen listen if you're behind after two minutes Ruffy you know the game's a bogey for Aberdeen and all the plans that Barry Robson had put in place yeah we thought Aberdeen were going to go there at the weekend and at least make uh, Celtic fight for their win but right for the very very start they were just back to their old ways, and even at the end of the game, I mean, the last five, ten minutes, it was farcical, some of their defending. But as you said, they certainly were just relentless. Uh, and I'm going to throw out my uh, player of the year, uh, Hatati. Oh, he go. just jumped on a bandwagon when well, somebody a, scores a couple well, of goals. Hold on a minute, it's 20th of February, yeah, Ruffy. I, I can't see anybody to touch him. Well, wait a minute, for what if Kyogo hits 30 or Lauren Shanklin no, hits 30? No, Hatati for me has been a star. What, even if they hit 30? Yeah, yeah. Shanklin I think hits 30 goals. No, nah, he's went off the boil in there. He's, what? He's gone. He's <laughs> been <laughs> <laughs> suspended. I'm just saying Hatati's really impressed me. He's a joy to watch. And at this moment, if I was to vote, he would get my vote. Ah, wait a minute. Uh, don't don't, don't, don't like reward him. At this moment. Way. Don't reward him. Go and watch what you say on this show for now because some people pick it up and yeah. contort it a wee bit. Yeah, okay. Right word, the, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. You got it right. <laughs> Hugh McDonald was in here. What were the words he was using last Thursday? Yeah, what was the one that you... Oh, I can't even pronounce it. Osmosis. (laughs) Real. Real. Absolutely real. I thought he was in for a starter from my dinner. (laughs) 
Um, uh, Ali, as far as um, as far as the, the, the game is concerned, he's gone too early with Hatati. Let's be honest about it. But um, McGregor scored a peach of a goal. Abada gets a wee bit of the icing on the cake. Uh, Aaron Moy it looks as if he should be okay for the final with Turnbull available as well. Celtic look as if they're at full strength ahead of this big game. They do, and I think um, I think when you look at and when you compare and contrast both squads and where they are since they last met in January, I think Celtic look to have got stronger. I think they've had players come back in that are properly fit. If you think uh, back to the start of Janu January, the likes of Carl Starfelt who'd just come back into the team after being out for a while, but you would also have to say guys like Katate, Dyson and Maeda are in the kind of form of their Celtic careers just now. I think they're going through a real purple patch. I thought Maeda came back from the World Cup. Just He almost looked like a different player. I don't know if it's just having the benefit of a bit of confidence, a wee bit of self-belief, but I think he's been excellent for Celtic uh, post-Christmas time. I think uh, both teams are in... It's interesting because both teams are in, in, in a winning run of form, and we've spoken about this often. People refer to the fact that the form book is out the window for these type of, type of games. I always think the, that the form book is actually a very accurate barometer of how the game plays out, but this one is interesting given that both have been winning. Both are fairly confident. I think Celtic might just edge it because the f of the fluency that they have at the minute, the way that they're winning this average of, what is it, 3.18 goals a game or whatever. They look pretty formidable at the minute and when they have a full hand to pick from, I think that they have options to change it. If it's not going well within the game, they've got options to, to, to bring on game changers. Yeah, what is it about this side? They've gone <coughs> early, by the way. She's predicted who's going to win the cup final. He's gone Hatati to win the player of the year. It's, um, it's You offer opinions of this. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Ali's We've fighting back. A bit of be a sub and Rangers 4 0. Yeah, um, well, hang on now. <laughs> we'll, we'll at least wait till we get to the end of the programme. Uh, Ange Postacoglu, um, a lot of people obviously looking at the 4 0 win and asking him, um, you know, does that have a real, I don't know, positive effect on this team going into it? And, and I think Ange, as ever, just looking at the way they're playing and saying if they can maintain that, um, they'll do okay in the final. You know, uh, any team can win it, and same, even more so in the final. I mean, we we played Hibs last year, and uh, you know, it's a pretty tight game. So, uh, you know, from our perspective, we're not going into it thinking that um, anything other than we've got to be the best we can be to to get the job done, which is what we do every week. Yeah, just getting that job done, be at their best, and uh, then see exactly what happens. Um, but when you look at the forum at the moment, as, as everybody's talking about. Nobody seems to be able to derail them, which I think, from a Rangers perspective, I think even in the last couple of weeks, Michael Beale has said, realistically, you know, it's going to be a tall order to try and bridge the nine-point gap, but in a one-off game. Yep, a one-off game, Rangers, have, I think, showed in the league game, uh, when Michael Beale just came in, that they're capable of causing Celtic problems. There's nobody good enough to take points off of Celtic or Rangers, for that matter, at the minute. I think Hearts are now 22 points behind Rangers, you know, so that was short-lived, you know, them challenging Celtic and Rangers, so... I don't think the league the league's done. Celtic will win the league, um, but in, in a one-off game, if Rangers turn up and play really well and get a little break on the day, they can win, they can beat Celtic for me. Um, but I agree with, with Alison. I think that Celtic just look so strong at the minute. They've got competition for places. They've got people chomping at the bit to come on, you know. And they, you know, with the five substitute rule, I think Celtic that could be a, that could be massive in the final. I think we, when you're bringing subs on off the bench that are quality. And uh, I think that Celtic have got a deeper squad, more depth uh, than Rangers. So. I think if Rangers can hang in uh, to 70, 80 minutes, then they've got a wee chance, but I just think Celtic will be too strong for them. Yeah, on the flip side of that, uh, the opposition at the weekend, Aberdeen, when you go behind uh, as early as two minutes, you're going to be up against it. Uh, and I think uh, Barry Robson, who's there in a caretaker role at the moment, it clearly was frustrated walking into the press room. You know me as a player, you know me as a person, you know the way that I want to be. And and um, the frustrating part for me is to, I'd love to get a team to that, um, and that's what you just want time and you want lots of things to be able to do that but but um, I think as I said the last two games before that I thought I really liked what I saw in them and um, that was just frustrating that, that you just saw that wee fragility was still there a wee bit but we'll, we'll get past that 
Yeah, uh, quite a lot of managers and care well, caretaker managers especially want to try and produce positive results to put themselves in the frame. Whether that one really has gone against Barry Robson, only time will tell because um, as Dave Cormack is having that triple bypass heart surgery, uh, Alan Burrows will have to get in there. Look at the contenders. I imagine they'll be getting whittled down. I mean, talking about Ricardo Rodriguez uh, is one of those uh, coaches who could be a serious contender. You know, real talk, I think, about Gordon Strachan. And if he pulled that off, I'd, I think it would be a major coup to get him in any coaching capacity because I, I just think Gordon Strachan back at Aberdeen as the main coach would be superb. I don't think they can pull it off. And I'll tell you why, because I know him that well that I think he's... I don't think he's in that zone anymore. I would agree with you. I think uh, I would agree with you on all fronts. And I think for someone of Dave Cormack's age, I think Gordon Strachan would be uh, it would have been one of his heroes. I think growing up, um, I'm sure he would love to have someone of that stature back in the dugout. Whether or not it's a, a plausible candidate, I'm not so sure. Just where Gordon is in his career just now, if he'd fancy going back in and 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 being up for that kind of fight, you never know. Even Craig Brown took it on in, in, in his in senior them. years. Um, yeah, I know, listen, there's always there's always, so, well, there's always some kind of evidence to suggest somebody can get and do it. Can Gordon Strachan, um, would he be able to go up to Aberdeen, galvanise them, get them organised and put a bit of fight into them? 100%, I rate him highly as a coach. Do I think he's, he wants to go back into it? Mm, I'm not so sure. I think the game's, I don't think it's... it's I think it's changed since he was a manager. I think it has, you know, in terms of, of speaking to players and agents and all that. And it hasn't I, changed the reason. <laughs> <laughs> David Martin I, I, just wraps I, I into. I don't see. I could maybe see him going in as maybe a number two or a, I don't know, director of something with Robson being a manager. I think they both know each other well at Celtic, but I don't see him being the number one. I think he'd be a good, a steady hand for some a young manager to, to look to for for guidance, but. You've done the same thing with, with James McPeak at Dundee, something like that. But I don't see him being a manager now at this stage of his life. You do wonder if it just appeals to your ego as a manager, if there's yeah. like another mm. shot at going up and. I could see him. As, I could see him as a director of football, but how many, how many is roughly said, how many checks can you take? Dundee <laughs> looking at the kids at Celtic, then director of football at Aberdeen. Oh, it's all there. <laughs> you know, I'll be here. I'm up here on Tuesday because I'm down with the kids. Um, no, but I mean, if he did um, it, it go, agree to go back. It would be. It, I think it would be it, it's in a higher role if they could pull it off. I'm not so sure that's going to happen. Yeah, I I would agree. I, I think he would be an incredible coup for Aberdeen to get uh, someone of vast experience. It could definitely go in and and steady things. Whether or not it's realistic. I'm not so sure. OK, so Celtic got a convincing win over Aberdeen. Uh, Rangers <laughs> equally so, with a double from Tavernier and one from Roof and a 3-0 win at uh, Livingston. So lots to talk about in this game. Uh, first and foremost, uh, you know, Rangers penalty kick taker. I always say it's an art. It's not something, Ruffy, that's just uh, your potluck. And James Tavernier has proved that. He's such a good penalty kick taker. Yeah, he puts his foot through the ball. He knows exactly where he's going to put it. He knows the height he wants to put it at, you know, and it makes it even look better when the goalkeeper goes the opposite way. Yeah. But you have to have a lot of confidence to put your foot through a ball because we know the higher you go, the more chance you've got of missing it. But uh, he seems to have a technique uh, I find in the net regularly. Yeah. And I'll tell you one thing, never mind penalties, his free kick was a peach. Yeah, t technically he's superb. I think he's a he's a modern day fullback, Peter. I think that, you know, fullbacks now, they, they need to get forward and join in. You know, it's less about defending than it is about going and creating and scoring goals. And, you know, we'll get the answer to the quiz question later on, but he scored a lot of goals for Rangers, not just penalties and free kicks, but for open play as well. So. I think he's been a, a tremendous sign uh, for Rangers and uh, technically, you know, anywhere about the box, a free kick, you would think he'd find something to go in and he put it right in the top corner. It was a, it was an absolutely great goal. Goalkeeper, no chance, and he took his penalty well as well. So, you know, you can't ask any more for your captain and your, your right back. Yeah, two contentious issues here, which we'll hear from um, both managers, uh, one of them in particular. Um, are we giving penalties for a tug on the shirt, Ali? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Um, yeah, I think it's soft. I have to say, I think uh, how many times do you see it? But on the other hand, I think uh, there's an argument to say that you don't want to see it. How many times have we said, well, if it happens anywhere else in the pitch, would you give a foul? 
I think it is soft when I think you, you could feel aggrieved. I think if it's given against you, if it's one that goes for you, I think you're going to you're going to shout for it every time. The chances of you getting it are, are rare. I don't think you see them given very often at all. Well, then there is <coughs> there is a key point, Ruffy. It's, it's a penalty if he pulls his shirt. If it is, week in week out. As soon as you have a tug, penalty. Yeah, you, you see it when there's more of a group of players or oh, in a bunch going, you see them tugging and I think the corner I think different. because of this Absolutely. one I think because of this one and uh Penrice was it was so glaring, you know, because it was just him behind Morellis, you know, you could see it as clear as then. I don't think Morellis was getting the ball. Yeah. So it was a stupid tug of the jersey because uh, he wasn't getting it. And I think it was because it was clear and I know I know what Ali's saying when a corner comes over, everybody's running for it. It was it was an isolated person, yeah. if you know what I mean. You could see him actually tugging it, and they've obviously decided that Morelos was getting it. I don't think he was, but yeah. there you go. Penalty? Penalty, yeah. Yep. I thought it was a penalty. I thought it was a penalty. Yeah. I think if you tug someone in the box, regardless if you're going to score, you're not going to get the ball, it's a foul. And uh, I, thought, I thought it was the right decision. I thought it was a penalty. Yeah. David Martindale had this on uh, the incident. <clears throat> So I think it's very harsh. I think if you were to go round every game in the Premier League or even every game in Scotland, there would be 20-odd penalties being given a day for somebody having a whole day the opposition players shot. It happens to Joel Nubley every day of the week all over the park and we don't seem to get fouls or free kicks or penalty kicks for it. So I don't think there's a lot in it. I can see why the referees had to go and look at the monitor, but just a wee bit disappointed. Why? OK, um, so Gallant says he pulled Morelis' shirt. It's a penalty. Um, lots of people just uh, looking. Um, <laughs> there's some again. This is the great thing about it. Ali took a deep breath there and went, here we go. <laughs> there you are, Ali. I'm not bother reading it out. But anyway, uh, some people, and uh, you know, people saying it's a penalty. Um, I think it's a kind of penalty if it's given against you you're always going to have a grievance because of the consistency of it because of the fact it's given so rarely in those occasions This is what David Martindale has just said we've all heard that I think that's the point here it's not whether or not it's a penalty it's if it's a tug of the shirt now and it's a penalty make sure it's the same every week um, and I think he'll be aggrieved if he doesn't get one um, but um, Chris says I agree with David Martindale it's nonsense uh, beautiful game says penalty end of I like people who do that by the way it's almost as if here is the light the way in the truth chapter 5 line 2 <laughs> and that's it shut up everybody and move on yeah. uh, so there penalty you are penalty kick for me penalty kick ok um, but uh, it's one of those ones that you can hotly contest it ok if we want an opinion on Omienga I'm sorry you can't send him off no, I, 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 that was shocking for me I thought I thought both of them were, were soft I thought I don't even think it was a foul I think he, he kind of moved his leg into it was it it's clumsy. It it Did you think see it, the first yellow? The first yellow is a joke. First yellow is a joke. It's never a red card. The second, it's not a second yellow. No, it's not, it's not a yellow card for me. No, and a, a referees I that was poor. Referees the, are uh, quick to point out to you. Not every tackle is a, and, and maybe is a booking. I, we didn't. I didn't watch the. Maybe it was can you know persistent fouling. You know, we didn't, we didn't watch the game live, so maybe a few before that. Maybe, maybe he said thought, something to the referee. Maybe thought, but in terms of just looking at that foul, yeah. was that a yellow card? Never the million years. Yeah, first one. Soft, I know. didn't even think it was a yellow card either. It's, you know, I don't know about you, Ruffy. Hold on, <laughs> hold on. Oh, oh, yeah, God. Go on, then. I'm absolutely astounded. I'm agreeing with every word that Tom's saying. <laughs> yeah, I thought Camaro was touched and then he slipped. He slipped on his own two feet, and uh, the boy got booked. I thought the second one, I thought. Roof was at it. I think he was trying to get into the box. I thought he, he put his leg into Elmi Onga. When, when he, 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 there was contact, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with that. But if you get a chance to look at it again, he actually stubs his own foot. He stubs his foot into the ground to try and get himself into the box, and I think the referee was conned. Yeah. Okay. Oof, there you are. Uh, so uh, Robert, I think the oh, so he's in that mood. Robert says never a yellow card. Uh, Ian Doherty says I wouldn't have sent him off for that. Uh, I think the general consensus is it was. Um, oh, Gallant says Roof was impeded uh, for the second one, um, and then everybody just steams in, and then eventually, what I like about the feed sometimes. <laughs> oh, Gallant, that's not a yellow card. Uh, no, but when I. <laughs> When eventually, when eventually, this is the way social media goes now, and and it's absolutely fantastic, especially as you know Twitter. <laughs> Once they deal with the point, then there's the attention rate of a termite, and then they'll think, 
who are you talking to? No, you. And then they all start punching each other and forget what we're actually <laughs> arguing about. So, um, anyway, I didn't think it was one deal. But listen, the one thing is Rangers got a 3-0 win. But there was a banner um, that the Rangers fans uh, had displayed at the ground that day. And I think it was trying to let not only the board, but maybe everyone who uh, is representing the club uh, should actually just step up to the plate. Uh, this is what it had to say on it. Um, Two trophies in 11 years uphold the standards um, uh, that matter, uh, I think it says. Um, I think Rangers fans just basically uh, letting the, the, the board know that it's it's, it's not it not good enough. I thought it was bizarre, I have to say. The timing, I, it, the timing, I the timing the, is the bizarre. The doing well. Um, I, and I know, I'm assuming that it's in reference to the the standards, the, the conversation that's going on all week uh, between Chris Sutton and Michael Beale, and I think just maybe a reminder, let's make sure we're getting it right in the park. But I thought the timing was odd. Uh, I'm not sure how much else he could have done since he's come in. I think he's surpassed the expectations at, at getting into a side that was toiling in the opening half of the season. He's, he's brought in a bit of stability. I think uh, they've not closed the gap largely because of how consistent Celtic have been, but I don't think he, he could have <coughs> done much else since his arrival. I just thought the timing mm -hmm. seemed a bit off. Yeah, absolutely. I think Michael Beale has done well with what he has at his disposal. The big pressure comes roughy when Michael Beale wants to build his own side and there are nine or ten players that he's got big calls on in the summer. Um, you know, whether they look sentiment, whether sentiment comes into it with regards to Davis, is there a playing role for him? Um, whether they, they look and say to themselves, what about our field? Um, of course, Kent and Morellis are the hot Jack. topic. Ranger, Ryan yeah. Jack's another one. So there's big Ranger. calls on a lot of players. There's McGregor, well, I think McGregor's, you know, he'll be gone, but you need to find a goalkeeper. The other thing about it, though, is they've got to build a side. They'll have season ticket money. They'll have, obviously, try and, you know, the Edmondson uh, new project will generate money. They've got to look for, you know, sponsorship deals that'll bring in money as well. They've got to hope they get Champions League group stage um, through the qualifiers. All of that is that kind of a roll of the dice Meanwhile, Celtic have got 50 million in the bank. I think Rangers are, will be looking and saying, right, we need we need major investment here to have a right go at Celtic because, you know, the, the, right now, it looks as if Celtic are stronger than them. Now, the gap, everybody can argue over it game by game, but that's what's facing the... I think a lot of fans are looking at it and saying, well, we know the score here. You need to try and bridge that gap. Yeah, and, and unfortunately for Rangers, they've missed the boat with uh, Morelos and... And uh, with the money, the sell on, every time Celtic sell on somebody, it's for a, a good deal of money and it just goes right into the bank. Every person you mentioned there that might not get a, a new contract isn't going to bring in a, a bag load of money, you know, into the kitty. So you're right, you know, they have to find the finances. I see, see there was another share issue yesterday, uh, the weekend there, the boy paid a million pounds for some shares, I can't remember who it was. But they've got to get away from doing that and trying to be standing on their own feet, you know, and, and that means bringing players in and selling them on. If that's the case, that's what they've got to do. But at this moment in time, it's, a, it's like a complete rebuild the way that Celtic had, but I don't think Rangers have got the money to do what Celtic have done. Yeah. So I was just going to say, the other thing about Celtic is what you would say is, <coughs> aside from having a, a, a tidy sum sitting in the bank, they have assets, saleable assets. Sure. Hatati, Maida, maybe not so much Maida, but Hatati, even Matt O'Reilly, you've got players there that I think would command decent fees. Yeah. If, it were, if they were to go and, and you look at how unsentimental Postacoglu is, he, he won't hang on to anyone. If there's a whiff of anyone wanting to go, they're, they're gone. Jackie Marcus, I think, you know, was out the door. As soon as the offer came in, as soon as it was clear he wanted to go, there, there's no hint of trying to talk him round or, or stay. It's, We'll take the money, we'll take the best way we can get, and on you go, Sammy Granovich. Yeah. Uh, you're able to turn around and bring in a replacement fairly quickly, and I think that's a, 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 an aspect that's very different between the, the long-term structure around both clubs. I think Celtic have had that for a long time. It's a, a business plan that's been very successful for the last couple of decades. And who have Rangers got now in their team that could sell for big money? 
Well, it's amazing how things it's amazing how things flip because you know Not many. when Steven Gerrard won the title, you know that old classic. Who, which of the Celtic side would get into the Rangers team? Not many because that was a title-winning Rangers side, and then they were talking about there's two or three players who were sellable assets then, and then it's through sold. through a delay they sold a couple, yeah. but through a delay suddenly Kent and Morelos are, are not. Assets that can be sold now. Absolutely, you've you've allowed the contracts to run down. I think you have to strike when the iron's hot in that respect. I think if you take if you have a good offer, you've got to take it and then reinvest it. Yeah. Bring it in and, and you you allow the manager then maybe sometimes maybe sign two or three players on the back of one very successful sale. And the other dilemma is for this weekend. It's a, it's a one off cup final. It'd be a real shot in the arm if Rangers uh, could deliver a hammer blow to Celtic's uh, thoughts of a possible treble. Uh, Rangers will be chasing two cups believing that they can get a double. Um, but here's a quick update from the manager on some of the players who might be touch and go for the weekend. Well, they're big doubts because they're not available today. Uh, Malek's got a problem with his hamstring, um, Jacko with his calf, and, and obviously John with his ankle. Uh, I'm optimistic to think those, plus maybe Scott Arfield, will return to training at the back end of the week, but it'll be touch and go. Um, so what you saw today might be what we have, and uh, I was delighted with what, what I got today. Yeah, um, I, I, always, I always treat with a pinch of salt, Ruffy. <laughs> <laughs> Call me a cynic, but I always treat with a pinch of salt. Managers like, oh, he might not be. Robinson it. at the weekend. Yeah, well, obviously, uh, you know. <laughs> Yes, in, in, exactly. It's a classic, isn't it, Ruffy? Well, he might yeah. not make his touch and go next minute. What a recovery. No, he knows exactly who's, who'll be available and who won't. His medical team will have told him, OK, it might be a calf or a hamstring or whatever, but he'll know. They'll they'll be telling him, you know, by Wednesday, he might be OK or Thursday. And then when it gets near the, the final, he's got to make a decision because if it's a really top player, and he's not 100%, that's when he has to make a decision. You know, do I take a chance and play him or not? But uh, he doesn't seem to like people who are, the in, uh, who are injured. You know, he likes yeah. you know, players who are fully fit all the time. That'll decide again and what players stay and what players, players go. You know, I think he'll be encouraged with his two signings that he's brought in, who have come in right away. They've not been hanging about for two or three weeks. They've got match fitness and uh, they could be big players for them. I like the Bill Shankly attitude to people who are injured. You just don't speak to them. <laughs> if you speak to any of that, that great Liverpool side of the 60s, anyone who's injured, sh Shanks just ignored them. Have you ever seen, have you ever seen, I'm talking about Neil Warner again, have you ever seen the documentary with Neil Warner? They, they didn't like injured players in the dressing room. Just get out. There's a couple of guys injured when he's at Sheffield United. You're like, oh, get out. They didn't like any injured players in the dressing room. Um, so you, you do get a lot of managers who. Just bin you off if you're injured. Yeah, absolutely. Speak to you. Gives you the incentive to get back quickly. <laughs> um, okay, if anybody was talking about, uh, you know, Hearts bridging the gap uh, with uh, Rangers and Celtic, the, the big two, it was well and truly shot down. 2 nothing. I, I mean, I just didn't see it coming, did you, Ali? I don't think any of us did, did we? No. Did anyone have that? No, no Tam. Uh, Tam maybe had 4 nothing. Uh, no. my head. But uh, Tam I Cowan. Head my heart. I, I I didn't see it at all, and I knew that there was a bounce last weekend. But I thought Hearts would have been too strong. I thought um, I didn't see Mullerwell scoring a couple of goals and not conceding any. So hats off. You would have to think that Short sure, Kettlewell might just fancy that that's quite a, a significant result when it comes to, to any ambition that he might to have now or getting it in a permanent position. Just shows you how crazy football well, is. Two games, um, and they're already they're obviously going to talk to him this week to give him the possibility of getting the job. Two games, Ruffy. Mm -hmm. It could be no harm to the boy. No, he's, got a bit of, he's got a bit of nouse about him because he's been a manager yeah, before. I, I, actually, he's one of these managers I quite like talk, you know, a coach. He talks, you know, as if he, he knows what he's talking about. A lot of them don't, but I think he does. I think he's had the experience up at Ross County. I quite liked him up there as well. I thought he was pretty honest in his, his interviews, and I think he's the kind of player that, in a dressing room, the way Motherwell are just now, that players would respond to him. I thought that the difference at the weekend was that the Motherwell players seemed to have a bit of fight about them. You know, if there was a 50 50, they were winning them. Yeah. You know, whether it was just putting their foot in or whatever. And I don't think Hearts expected uh, them to be like that. And as Blair Spittle said, when we're down the bottom of the league, you don't get any breaks. He wouldn't have got that break. Come right come, back off the coast, the him, post, right? yeah. you, you don't get them when you're when you're down there and you're no winning games. So he, they'll see that as a turn as well. But if you're a player and 
a new manager comes in and you get a couple of wins, you're enjoying yourself. Yeah, Stuart Kettlewell, just having a wee snipe at some people, he uh, clearly thought uh, some cynics had it in for Muddle. Probably nobody gave us a shot here today of winning this game. I genuinely don't think they did. Um, I think that there was plenty of people wanting to kick a group of players in a football club while they were down. Um, and listen, you don't feel sorry for yourself in these situations. You have to do something to change that that narrative. And unfortunately, in the last two games, the players have been able to do that. OK, that's a kind of a, a snipe back at people, but I don't think anybody had it in for Motherwell. To, I don't agree with Stuart there because, you know, everybody wanted uh, Stephen Hamill to do well, but he just looked haunted at the end. Is he trying to create a siege mentality there? exactly yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's trying to get us against them. And uh, if he is, it's certainly working so far in that dressing room because, you know, I've seen them a couple of weeks ago and <laughs> there's a lot of players were doing a lot more running than they were back then. And uh, So, listen, Stephen and Brian Kerr, will be sitting scratching their head wondering why why they couldn't put those that sort of effort in for them. Um, but listen, they totally deserve to win the game. I thought Hearts were dreadful, to be honest. I thought they were really poor. But you've got to give Motherwell a lot of credit for that. They closed them down at every opportunity. They worked hard. They were in their faces. They put balls in the box. The two strikers, they got up to the strikers. They made Hearts defend and they couldn't, they couldn't handle them. And they, they thoroughly deserved to win the game. So, listen, I think he's, he's got to be... You know, I don't think there's any chance that they don't give him the job now. I don't think, don't see how you can not give him the job. I think he's came in as a caretaker, two great wins, and uh, I think they're going to, I think they're going to give him the job at least to the end of the season. Wow, well, I don't gobsmacked. think they'll even be contemplating anyone else now. No, no. Well, I'm gobsmacked at that because I think they'll I, give him the job I think in the next few days. I think it's so critical um, down at that bottom end. You, you need. Um, listen, he may well have shown in the background um, that he's got those qualities that the, the Motherwell board have really responded to. It's a big call. It's going to be a big call, especially with that relegation dogfight. As far as Hearts are concerned, no excuses from the uh, Jam Tarts boss, Robbie Nielsen. Ball comes in, we don't react to the, the ball off the post. So, two areas where, you know, the goals we lost come down to my opinion, the concentration. But other than that, you know, like, that for me is not a big issue. You know, the, the issue for us today was that, you know, we were just miles off where we need to be, we need to rectify it. Yeah, miles off it. No argument. I thought they were poor. I was surprisingly poor when you consider where they've been in in recent weeks. I, I just thought they were they were off it. I, I didn't think they they mustered too much at all yesterday. Surprisingly, um, and I think when you look at the the chasm now between Celtic and Rangers, and then Hearts and Rangers are nine points off of Celtic. And then you've got this vast gap of twenty two points, points mm. between uh, between Hearts and Rangers. I think it just reflects. How poor everyone else has been. It's, I think it's been a poor season for for almost every club out with the top two. I think the standard has definitely dipped a bit this season. Yeah. Okay. Um, Motherwell are at Kilmarnock at the weekend. Saberdeen, Livingston, Ross County, Dundee United, and St Johnston, St Mirren. Um, of course, a couple of clubs won't be involved in any action because Rangers and Celtic are playing in the Via Play League Cup final, which I'll get your prediction from uh, you, Ali, before you go, um, because we won't get the chance to talk to you later on. It gives everybody a chance to leather you non-stop for all the way through <laughs> for the week as well. Um, I she's went 4 now, Celtic, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> you that comfortable, um, Well, you have Mali on that shortly. Okay, quick one here. Uh, Vassell, red card or not? No, it's not a red card. No. 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 Not a red card. No. Okay. Um, Derek McInnes agrees with you. I think Kyle's got his eyes in the ball the whole time. He's tried to actually kind of just keep his foot still, rather than there's no forward movement. But you're in a sanitised room, fifty odd mile away, watching that over and over again, and they're saying to the referee, "You need to have a look at that," and that's a red card or whatever. Game's going mad. That is not a red card. You know, I'm sick to death this far. It's, it's our turn this week. There'll be somebody else probably in Scotland suffered the day as well. And okay, he's miffed. Yeah, he should be more miffed about his players' performance than, than that incident. You know, I think that they're, they're absolutely dial in a. You know, they don't look like winning games. You know, and uh, I can see why he's upset. I mean, you stand at the side and you you see that, you, you automatically think as a manager that's affected the game, we could maybe get something out of that. I don't think they were ever going to get in at it, you know, so they're, they're in deep trouble, but they've got games coming up, as you were just saying there, that they've got to win, particularly yeah. the home ones. Yeah, I think they'll appeal, try and appeal that one, but uh, <laughs> nevertheless, I if he, I was just about to say to you, if he, he's... Not many if, options up there. Well, not, not, not a lot of options. Um, the one thing that was a 
good result for Hibs. Again, that whole momentum thing that you talk about, Sam, but the setback for me is McGeady pulling a, a hamstring. Looks a bad one, according to Lee Johnson. Yeah, well, I think it's, uh, they're waiting until Wednesday. I think they're going to get the results on Wednesday. Um, hopefully it's not as bad as, as, as first thought because... You know, even in the first first half, he was outstanding. You know, with a couple of great balls in behind the fullback. Um, he's a, he's still a top player, but yeah. you know, at his age, you know, 35, 36, you pick up you pick up injuries, and uh, sadly for Aidan, it looks as if he's he's got a bad one. But uh, that will be a blow because the last five or six games, he's he's really looked apart. Um, hopefully, Kevin Nisbet will be back next week. Would uh, would be soften the blow, but. And hopefully McGeady's not out for any, for any long term. Yep. Uh, still strutting his stuff. Uh, someone here thought he was past his sell-by date, but uh, there's no substitute for class, and he certainly got it in abundance. Um, and, you know, if he's out, he's a huge blow. He's Hibs' best player by an absolute country mile. Um, OK, there's a strange thing, uh, Ali, that I was looking at, which is uh, Hibs have actually put out this, you know, early, early chance February to get next season's season ticket um so if you book it you get you get it for 375 pounds which is just up a tenner from last year um but if you do it um you know before the deadline which is april 14th you, you can save around 20 pounds so they clearly want money in early yeah it's a it's kind of odd time i think um maybe just to give people a bit of notice given the current economic climate to to say to people that's coming up rather than to announce it and give people very little breathing space before the deadline, the early deadline passes. But yeah, I think I think it would suggest that a, a real need to get finances into the club and quickly. Um, I, I just wonder. I think sometimes for a lot of people, mm. renewing a season ticket is just a it's a rite of passage. You'll get people who who would do it season after season, regardless of of league performances or, or where they are. And then obviously you'll have a a certain percentage that will be floaters for want of a better word that if the team are doing well maybe buy into it uh, but yeah I, I think I can't remember any club ever having it having that kind of announcement in February yeah it's a strange one um, nevertheless if he keeps winning games they'll back him yep six games undefeated and they're only five points behind one of the best Hearts teams that's ever existed yeah well that's, I'm, I'm going to give for I'm going to give you that snipe because there was actually a, a tweet on our feed at the weekend and it was Hibs <coughs> not too far behind Hearts and and the Hibs fans says and we're supposed to be in a transitional period yep. and they're getting all the one plaudits of, one of the worst Hibs teams ever ever existed uh, you know against a a Hearts team that's going to split the whole firm, so only five points behind. Well done, Abs. Yeah, they're just staying on their coattails. <laughs> Doing well. I just, I'm going to give you. I think you deserve. He deserves it, yeah. doesn't he, Ruffy? Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, because they are. I mean, listen, there was a period when people are going, Lee Johnson, come on. Well, so we were, to we give were the even boy. looking at it after Christmas yeah. when you were looking at the run of results when they had Celtic, Rangers, Hearts, mm. and you feared yeah. for them. Because well, he started uh, saying, I need five transfer windows, and uh, I thought, you'd be lucky to get two, but the boy's done well. Yeah, against all expectations. I I thought that he would. He was on very, very thin ice. At Celtic, one. Rangers in the next three games. So... It's yeah, had the run coming. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, it fluctuates. I'll tell you one thing that's not fluctuating at the moment. Dun United one, St Johnson two. Um, Ruffy, talk me through Berigiti. What was he thinking? Was it a bad pass right. back, or was it just the keeper should have thought quicker? He just panicked. It. He panicked. There was nothing available for him where he put it. Yeah, there was nobody wide. There was nobody in front of him, and he was looking up to see what he was going to do with the ball, and he just left it too late. And he, me was far too sharper than him. Yeah, he just saw it. He read it. You know what was going to happen. He should have just just hit it. But he tried to be as modern day goalkeepers are. They try to be technical and think they're good with the ball at their feet. And yeah, he just got caught. Yeah, you'd be good with the ball at your feet. What would you have done? Just I'd have panicked and scalped it. <laughs> 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 yeah, absolutely. Even lovely. the first goal. I mean, it was good of him at the first goal to, to stand at the post and then the ball in the centre of the goal. So he done well on that one as well. Yeah, absolutely. But full <laughs> march to Stevie May, who's been brilliant for St Johnston uh, this season. He's scoring goals. But United, um, a lot of people looking now at uh, Liam Fox uh, and looking at the record. It is not good, you know, since he's taken charge. I mean, it's it's a 25% win rate now. It, it's grim. Um, the Dun United boss says he's still the man for the job.
think my position would come in, or any manager's position at any club after a run of the results that we've had comes under scrutiny. So listen, I accept that. There's, there's no issue with that from me. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. Um, I still feel I'm the man to get the club where we need to get to. I've no doubt in my mind about that. Um, so, no. Well, he was asked the question. I think he's under real pressure now, Ali. I think, is that their fifth successive defeat? I think they've uh, took one point in the last 18. It's... I think you, there comes a point where, as a club, you start to get spooked at the prospect of relegation and the financial implications of it. And I think that necessi necessitates a change in management. I think, uh, I think it's they look limp. Mm. They look like a a, a weak. They, there's a fragility about them as a team. I saw them last weekend when Kilmarnock beat them. They just. Uh, so many big players, I think, underperforming too. I thought Dylan Levitt was, was fantastic last season. I just don't think uh, they're getting as much out of players like that, that they need to be coaxing out. I think sometimes you just have a scent of teams almost just walking to relegation. Mm. Well, um, Damn Colts are sitting in the background as well. I don't think they could back that way. Listen, you, you never know with Dundee United. Um, one thing I would say, Rob, you've tipped Kilmarnock. I see Kilmarnock and Dundee United as the two teams... You know, Ross County are still in there. It looks like three that really are haven't seen anything that suggests that they can get out of it. Ross County lost again to St Mirren. Well played to St Mirren. Declan Gallagher's goal has got them in that top half. Yep. Uh, listen, we all <laughs> we heard Stephen Robertson at the weekend and we thought they were going to be putting out the reserves, but I think when you seen the starting 11, you thought you'd fancy St Mirren to beat Ross County and they've done that. Um, they've been very solid at home this, this season, St Mirren. Ross County, Malky, Kilmarnock, Derek McInnes, I think you're relying on their experience, their know-how, because I think both of them are poor and uh, both of them don't score enough goals. Dundee United have got a rookie manager, where they stick with him at the end of the season. I don't know, it's starting to look desperate for him at the minute as well, so you're, you're just, you know, you've got guys in the background who come in and save Dundee United, an experienced manager sitting without a job, so I think uh, Ross County Dundee United in the weekend is an enormous game for Liam Fox. Yeah, look at the Premiership uh, table now and you'll see exactly um, that three clubs, uh, 23 points for Kilmarnock, 21 for Ross County and 20 for Dundee United, although they do uh, have a game in hand. But uh, Motherwell with that big and unexpected win has helped them, Ali. Yeah, it's just lifted them away. It's just giving them a tiny bit of breathing space. I think they'll know themselves that there's still a fair bit of work to do. But I think it just takes the pressure off. I think two two wins, it just eases a bit of the tension that was around for Park. It, it's not quite as urgent a, a situation as what it was. But I think you would fear for all three teams at the bottom. But I think for me just now, Dundee United have a look of a team that are going down. Yeah, I tell you what looks like a real race, Ruffy, is the predictor, because what a weekend it was for McManus. He's going to enjoy this. Look at that. Alan Ruff oh, on 228, Peter oh. Martin 227, Dan McManus 226, and then, of course, it's difficult to actually even consider the mid-table mediocrity, <laughs> but let's mention it anyway. Alison McConnell, last year's winner, flash in the pan, 196, Tam Cowan, 188, Alley and Closing, and of course one seven two for Hugh. Not that um, far not Hugh, you, Ali. Hugh had a twenty one pointer or predicted it's Rangers impossible. to get a win. <laughs> it could be, it could be a, that you're under pressure. What's your thoughts on this, Ali? It's too early. To <laughs> well, Ruffy's called yeah. Player of the Year already. Yeah. <laughs> so two, po two points. I could have the top a, three. I yeah. could have a twenty one pointer. You could, by the way, but yes. unfortunately your son's not talking to you at the moment <laughs> and there's no chance he's going to give you the answers. Hey, Ruffy. <laughs> yes. Two points separating the top three now. Yes, there's a trophy yeah. to be won there and whoever wins it, well done. There's a big trophy yeah. this season, well Ali. Done. Last season was a small trophy. This season is a huge trophy. Yeah. It's a big cup. So, uh, yeah. Story of my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ali, I think, Ali, I think, I think we've, got, we've got a top three going for the league title and we've got a bottom three who are just trying not to buy the meal. Yeah, absolutely. The, split, it's, it's, the, the split's happened in February. Yes, You've summed up Ali's yeah, predicament I, perfectly there. We moved away from the St Mirren game because I thought my I saw the quote of the year Go on. Uh, was when the the Ross County boy gets sent off and Malcolm Mackay went to the fourth official. <laughs> what was that for? <laughs> <laughs> he's whispering in his ear. What was he getting sent off for? <laughs> 
No, that was a red card. All ma- no, I was just about to say, you're all managers. Just the one. All managers are like that, though, aren't they? They, they just get so uptight about it all. It is tight. Um, anyway, absolutely fantastic, that stuff. Um, and next season will be equally as good if we get all our uh, pundits involved to see how they can actually win some prizes as well for the predictor. Uh, here's the English Premier League from the weekend. It's amazing how football can take a twist here and there. Uh, Aston Villa were 2 1 up, but Arsenal fought back to win 4 2. 1 1 with Brentford Crystal Palace. Fulham with a, a, a sucker punch against Brighton. Chelsea lost to Southampton. Talk about pressure for Graham Potter. Brilliant for Son D- Sean Dyche. Um, 1 0 against Leeds. Nottingham Forest uh, again, really. Man City with so much possession and it ended up 1 1. Bournemouth with the win over Wolves. Liverpool majestic against Newcastle. Uh, <laughs> Manchester United 3 0 over men. Leicester, I know. And Tottenham 2 0 over West Ham, who are also in big trouble. David Moyes has got a real battle on his hands there to try and get them away. Have they got enough quality? Can Danny Ings start scoring goals for him? But uh, nevertheless, um, it's all set up brilliantly. Arsenal suddenly, who looked as if well, they're going to relinquish everything to Man City, and now City slip up. Arsenal still have a game in hand, and would you believe it? Dare I say it? Manchester United still hovering. Yeah, I think if uh, if Arsenal had lost that game and, and Man City dropped points, Man United were right back in it. Uh, they're only f- I think five points behind. Uh, obviously, I think they've played the game more than than Arsenal, but you know it's. <sighs> I thought at two one down, I thought Arsenal had blown it. I think I, I thought a lot of people would have thought that as well. Man City was going to win it now, but I showed Joe Hart and guts to come back and win it. And this is a different Arsenal team, you know, from the the ones we've seen with no spine the last couple of seasons. So I think it's going to go all the way to the wire between the three of them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just be uh, before we go, we'll give you the answer to the quiz and we'll do the competition again. But uh, it's a big week in the Champions League, uh, Ruffy. Obviously, uh, tomorrow you'll be here with uh, Tam Cowan, uh, Richard Foster, and. Adam Binney will be in here for his first hot seat, Ruffy. Oh. So you'll have to you'll have to guide him because I'll be coming to you live from Anfield for oh, Liverpool Real Madrid. Handed in your note to let us know you're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've given you an indication of where where it's going next season, Ruffy. Yeah, a freebie, man. Yeah, there's no stopping them. Champions there's League, no Ruffy, them, Liverpool, man. Real Madrid. For God's sake, hey, hospitality. I don't want to say in case he goes on a downer. It's as simple as that. Um, what a game to go to, Liverpool, oh, Real Madrid. Fantastic. Ali, you know, I mean, they've played each other. Three wins, five wins for Real Madrid. You know, a draw, I think, thrown in there for good measure. They've had three European Cup finals against each other. It's going to be great, Ali. What That'll a night! Be great fun. Oh, it'll be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, it's um, sometimes feels like a different game from from what we from what we watch. Absolutely, it will. Well, you only have to look at what Celtic and Real Madrid produced. I mean, Celtic for 60 minutes, as everybody talks about, fantastic. Real Madrid for me, Tam, when I was watching that game and some people were getting slightly excited with their Celtic tinted glasses on behind me, I I thought to myself, well, wait a minute, this is Real Madrid, they've been in this movie a hundred times, bish, bash, bosh, 3-0. Shank it up. Yeah, yeah, I think think Liverpool, obviously, a big result for them at the weekend. Uh, Gives them a bit of confidence. You know, special nights, European nights at Anfield, but I think I think Real Madrid are too good for them. I think Real Madrid will put them out. Yeah. You, yep. Do you keep your tinted glasses in your bag or do you just <laughs> <laughs> You, look at you by the way Ali don't hold back just leather on by the way it's as simple as that really looking forward to it Eintracht versus Napoli by the way Napoli I'm just looking they're the same as Liverpool at 11 to 1 Real Madrid at 11 to 1 to win it who are you going for Ali because Bayern are 11 11 to that's, a, that's a great price it is isn't it yeah. by the way the bookies the, favourite the 15 to, to 8 Man City who are you going for to win it it's a tough call I think, I think right. probably Real Madrid <laughs> I would say, I would try to go. By the way, don't don't suffer from him. Uh, what are you going for? I think Napoli eleven to one. What? A, that's a great price. Yeah, a tenner. I don't think they'll win it. Real Madrid for you. Real Madrid. Man City. Yeah, I'll, I'll, go, with I'll, I'll go, go with the favourite. I'll go with the favourite. I know, I know. I, I, I'm with you on it, Ruffy. I think City should win it. That's if they don't, win. I think, come on, you know, how can you give that manager that much money and he can't win the Champions League? And he's had a great reputation at it as well. But uh, nevertheless, uh, Gallant says Napoli will win it. Um, and David Gemmell says something that I think is, I'm not going to argue with, he says, top trophy room in the Bernabeu. Have you been there, Ruffy? Yeah. It's fantastic. Have you been there, Ali? No. Must take the boys there. They would absolutely love it, and the girls. Um, have you been? No, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't get that trip. 
No, <laughs> I mean, just in general, you may have gone to Madrid no, at some no, point. No. Okay, uh, okay, the answer to the quiz um, how many goals did he score? James Tavernier for Rangers. I can't remember, I'm not sure. Have a guess. Is it, is it about 90? 90. That's 90 something. 90, I'll go for 91. 91. 82. 82. It was 95. Oops. 95 goals, 112 assists in 387 Rangers games. So there's no doubt about it. Well worthy of his place in the Rangers Hall of Fame as well. Um, so absolutely magnificent. If you want to win the competition this week, by the way, it's a belter. It's another fantastic competition from PLZ Soccer. You can win this Lionel Messi Argentina World Cup winning replica jersey by answering this simple question. Who did Argentina defeat in the 2022 World Cup final? Post your answers in the comments section below. If you want to double your chances of winning, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Good luck. Yeah, can Ruffy, I say? Ruffy doesn't know the answer. I was just about to say, Ruffy's not getting not any chance of winning that messy top. Um, but, but by the way, um, if you hit the subscribe button, you'll double your chances of winning. Uh, just as a little footnote, Ruffy, and, and, I, and I think, you know, we always loved in the early days, and Ali, I'm going to include you in this. I'm not so sure about yourself. You might, but, um, you know, I loved Saint and Greavesy. I thought they were absolutely magnificent as a pairing. Um, when you think of growing up as a, a kid watching, Des Lynham was fantastic. Sadly, I noticed Dickie Davis from the World of Sport passed away. What an absolute professional he was. Yeah, and I think everybody uh, came after him. I've had to live up to him. You know, obviously there's been a lot of people, but as you say, Saint and Greavesy, he always switched it on whatever time it was on and then it was Dickie Davis after it and doing the whole the whole day yeah. and uh, a tremendous professional at what he did yeah absolutely uh, the one thing that the, my abiding memory that sticks with me you can always tell when somebody's really good at their job Ali somebody mimics them or impersonates them and Benny Hill <laughs> played Dickie Davis <laughs> and you can imagine in the background was just a whole sea of different stunning women <laughs> handing them sheets of paper and Benny Hill looking like Dickie Davis <laughs> it was just a great sketch you see it on YouTube had to be there never mind <laughs> they say that. They obviously clearly had to be there <laughs> One of them. I'm going to watch on YouTube and it better be as funny as you just made oh, it. Oh, honestly, it is. I mean, honestly, it is. But uh, <laughs> I think I speak for everybody who's ever lifted a microphone or ever presented a show. Rest in peace, Dickie Davis. From everyone on the football show, I think all our condolences to the family and friends. Great to have Tam with us. Brilliant Ali in uh, fighting talk there from Ali, considering she was about half an hour late. It was good to get, I mean, I don't know if she'll take any money for this one, Ruffy, but it's good to get her in for maybe 48 minutes. Show. She left her invoice up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, don't forget to join us tomorrow. I'll be live from Anfield for Liverpool against Real Madrid. I they were new, sorry. Adam new Binney. Sketch. Adam Binney will be. No, there's no new sketches for him. He's as tight. Why up in a pair of trainers? Any chance you buy a new so pair tight. of sketches? Clean them in the washing machine. Everybody sees it on the chat as he's got these sketches on again. Yeah. There's people here actually just uh, unbelievable. They're not new. You've had them for about three years. Yeah. Uh, okay. You owe them up to golf. That's next week's competition. Let's uh, get a f crowdfunding page for. Ruffy to get a new pair of sketchers. <laughs> Thanks to Ali, who's raging. She's getting close to five. She wants away. <laughs> <laughs> You're unbelievable. Uh, thanks to Ali, thanks to Ruffy and Tam, and from myself, Peter Martin, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>